Oh my god, start. <laughs> there it is. First try. First try. How you going, guys? How you going? How are you? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope you're good. I'm good. Did that play a sound? Okay, I think it did. Okay. I think it did. Hi. Hi. Hello. I got a new lens for that camera. That one. That one. Okay. So that and doesn't affect me. Doesn't it does it it does affect you because oh. that camera does not uh you the the the, the aperture can't change it. The uh, lens just can't change the aperture. I've okay. never seen that before in my life on a lens. <laughs> Uh, so I had a Brighton. So, hey, things are things we're we're figuring. Hi, see, it's it, nice it's, and it's closer on me. Okay, how you doing, guys? Good to see you, Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den here. Well, I uh, mean, you know, this is a professional podcast, so you expect nothing but the best. From yes. Me, so. Uh, anyway, we got a lot to talk about today. Yes. Big big time news is Tears of the yes. Kingdom. Yes. Also, you did you notice me staring at your finger just <laughs> now? Just now yeah. I did not notice that. Uh, fun fact: uh, mm -hmm. when you cut your kids' apples, make sure you watch what you're doing because you can take a chunk of your finger off. Okay, you got a finger sock. <laughs> you know, a band aid so, probably would have been no, fun. No, actually, so okay. here's here's my problem. I like I like cut my fingers a bunch and I like my cuticles bleed a bunch. So like I I use the band aids like a normal person. But then, you know, I also have to wash my hands a lot because I poop a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I go to wash my hands and the Band-Aid always comes off. And I found that the best solution is something like this because then the Band-Aid doesn't come off. Okay. It just gets soggy. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that that sounds like a sounds like a lot of a lot of work for it's, a little it, problem. It sounds it's a will problem, but you know what? <laughs> that I'm I'm gonna own this problem. Okay. You can buy like little condoms to put over the sock, and this way it doesn't get wet. And I have those, but I didn't bring them with me. Ah, little little finger condoms. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Interesting. Always wear condoms. Anyway, speaking of condoms, condoms <laughs> we want to talk about Zelda a little yeah. bit today because that just came out. Yeah. Pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reception about it and whatnot. I've played it. At, uh. I want to say hefty amount, but so many other people who have played it so much longer than I have. I feel like that's a game where I haven't played it. Full disclosure, I haven't played it yet. I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to playing it. Uh, I have played Breath of the Breath of the Wild, and I feel like this game is similar enough to Breath of the Wild where I could safely say that it's the type of game where you could where you think you're spending a hefty amount, but you're really not even scratching the surface. <laughs> yes, yeah, th yeah, that's accurate. I will say that uh, given all of the previews and stuff, mm -hmm. I did think that this was going to be Breath of the Wild Plus. Yeah. Because it's the same <coughs> same map and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. And it's using a lot of the same uh, uh, game mechanics and whatnot. I was not expecting how different it is. And it feels like a completely different game. Like okay. you have the same sort of combat mechanics right so that's still there and link kind of looks the same and the graphics are kind of the same but the map is completely different i don't recognize anything in it at all okay. there's so much more given the stuff in the in the up world all mm -hmm. the stuff above the map is it, it, all of that expands it so much also this might be a little bit of a spoiler there's down world too yeah so there's all different <coughs> kinds of levels to, mm -hmm. to to the game now so it is uh way different than i was expecting compared right. to breath of the wild and the building mechanics we knew that was going to be yeah. kind of a big deal that takes it one step even further it is it that is the whole game is 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 utilizing these building mechanics and fusing weapons together and stuff i will say the weapon degradation uh is worse now oh god <laughs> because it was already it, i mean it's the same as it was in breath yeah. of the wild they didn't change anything it, weapons are just as weak as they've always <coughs> been mm -hmm. but now you fuse weapons together and that's supposed to help like if a weapon is like breaking you can fuse it and and make it break uh like thick you kind of fix it yeah but uh it doesn't help much and you'll end up getting a really cool weapon, fusing it, making it really cool, and then it breaks in a couple hits. Yeah. And it's really frustrating because yeah. I'll have all I'll have such cool ideas to uh, like different ways to use these weapons, and I'll only get like two fights out of them. It's like really, yeah. you, you really get like no time at all with the weapons. Um, 
all that being said, uh, it is Breath of the Wild was already one of the greatest games of all time. It was right. the, it was one of the best games on the Switch. I struggled to say whether or not Mario Odyssey was better, mm-hmm. um, just because I personally liked Mario Odyssey, and I think that they're for two completely different types yeah. of people. Like some people don't want to mess around, some people just want to play a game. Some people yeah. want a linear experience, yeah. and I think Odyssey is really good for that. Um, I think Tears of the Kingdom is light years ahead of even Breath of the Wild. Really? And how good it is. Really? <laughs> and how it achieves the 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 goal of what it's setting out to do. Like okay. in Breath of the Wild, I felt really good about how I can just go wherever I want and yeah. anything I do is helping get me to the end goal of, of, of the game. Mute our Three alerts here. Of the Brothers Wolf. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll mute that in a minute. Uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild was really good at getting you to the end goal. Yeah. No matter which direction you went to, you felt like you were doing something to get yourself there. Got it. Um, Tears of the Kingdom uh, kind of does the same thing. It's hard. It's really hard to explain because I'm in a weird spot where I, I don't like to backtrack at all. Right. So when I come across something I probably shouldn't be able to do, I'll brute force my way through it. I'll try Got my it. hardest to like get there. Yeah. Because I don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. Normally, people would be like, oh, I see this. I should probably come back here when I have a better weapon yeah, yeah. Or, or better arm or whatever. I ha- You start the game with three hearts. You need a fourth one in order to open a door. So okay. I have four hearts. <laughs> and I found myself... At the end of this temple, somewhere really far away, Mm -hmm. because I just never came across one of those areas where you get more hearts. Mm -hmm. So I have a million of these things that will get me more hearts, but I ended up in an area where there's a boss that has three at the end of its name. So it's the third version of this boss, and Uh, I just, it's the first boss I've ever fought. And he one shots you because I'm severely under leveled. I shouldn't be fighting this guy. But I just brute forced my way through it (laughs) using all of the different wacky tools you have because you can basically do anything. And then there's a million ways to fight any boss. There's a million ways to traverse the land. There's no one way, one correct way. So I brute forced through it. It took me maybe only like 45 minutes to beat this boss. And then uh, I did it. And now I'm stuck in like the down world, uh, not knowing where to go because I don't want to fast travel back because I don't want to lose my place. (laughs) But... That's how I decided I wanted to play it. Okay. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it that way. All right. So I think Breath of the Wild made it so you can do whatever you want and go wherever you want. Tears of the Kingdom is the same, but gives you so many more tools to be able to do that. Right. Okay. And that it it it's it's as incredible as everybody is saying that it is. Okay. And that's coming from a guy. Who notoriously doesn't like who Zelda. notoriously doesn't like Zelda? I, 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 it, it almost pains me to say how good this game is because of the hype around it, and because right. everybody's always trying to shove Zelda on my ass. Right, everyone's trying to really force feed me Zelda. Yeah, but they might be right. They well, might be okay. right. Anyway, uh, so you should play it. I. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to play it. It's just yeah. that I have. You know, I didn't finish Breath of the Wild. I liked Breath of the Wild. I never finished Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Uh, f- Finishing this game is also an insanely huge task. Yeah. It, it, I think it's, if you mainline it, if you try to only do the stuff for the story, yeah. you, it's still 60 hours. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. It's the still- average is going to be like 90 hours yeah. to beat the game. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a lot. Even though Breath of the Wild, I beat it in like 30 because I like half ass yeah. you know and you could probably have i'm trying to half i saw people are like speed running it in like 90 minutes <laughs> yeah 90 minutes is the current speed running yeah. thing i'm trying to half ass this a little bit right. i'm trying to beeline it to so instead of just so there are four divine beasts okay in in, in breath of the wild and you can kind of do whatever in whichever order uh or you could just run to ganon right and that's cool mm-hmm. this i don't see a way to run to ganon there might yeah. be i'm not sure uh, in this one, there's just four dots on the map, and I guess they're like four temples, yeah. and you have to do them. And so it's kind of the same as Breath of the Wild in, in, in that regard. 
uh, except they're more clearly defined on the map. I don't think the Divine Beasts were as clearly defined. Yeah, no. Um, and I still haven't done one of the temples. I thought I was doing it, but I ended up just fighting this giant monster thing, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing yeah. now. Um, but yeah, again, there's a billion different ways to play this game. Uh, I'm hoping to beat it in less than 60 hours. Like, I really like it, but I don't yeah. want to be messing around. I'm trying to just do... I'm trying to get it done. I'm I'm right. I'm set out with a task. Um so yeah, if if it, it is going to take a long time. You know how Breath of the Wild has like the Great Plateau and you spend like 3 yeah. hours in the Great Plateau. This has almost the same thing. Yeah. And it is like 3 hours of like tutorial. Mhm. Also, the game kind of expects you to know like about the combat a little bit and stuff when you okay. like jump into it, which could be a little frustrating for somebody like Hannah who didn't even play the first one. Right. I mean, I think she did, but it was like a million years ago. Yeah. Um, well, that's another thing too. I haven't played the game in a long time. So yeah, the game kind of uh, assumes you know a little bit, but to be fair, it's it's a kid's game. Yeah. <laughs> so like, you might die, but like you'll figure it out yeah. if you just hit all the buttons. You'll you'll figure it out, and you're a full grown adult, so yeah. you'll probably have a better <laughs> shot than a lot of other people who, right, who right. play the game. So it, it the game is as difficult as you want it to be. I'm playing it in a really difficult way because I'm trying yeah. to just I'm trying not to grind. I'm trying to beeline it to everything. Um, but it is still it's still a kids game, so mm-hmm. so it could be really easy if you wanted it to be. Anyway. Uh, special thanks to Drowning Rabbit for the three months. Three months of Wolf Bros. Oh my god, thanks. Um, our friend Fried Biscuits uh beat it already. Uh, he beat it uh like two days ago. Yeah, he did a stream. Like he he spent a couple days on it, and then he did a stream. Stream ends when I beat the game because he thought he was close to the end. He streamed for eighteen hours that day. Oh god. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what's what do what do we got? What what in terms of articles? What do we got? Uh, well, I have the Metacritic okay. up for Tears of the Kingdom. Is this this is less than Breath of the Wild? Is it? Breath of the Wild was ninety seven for a long time. Well, there is there's one guy, one brave soul here, giving this game a sixty. Breath of the Wild is ninety seven. Wow. And that's not Twiddly. That's not Twiddly. That's me hitting the wrong button. And then here it is. Okay, here it is. 97 Breath of the Wild. Okay. Uh, yeah, who gave it a 60? Uh, this is uh, the reviewer for G Infin- uh, Finity, Josh Brown. Uh, the follow up to the divisive modern masterpiece struggles to cater to those uh, who divisive? miss its roots. Divisive to who? The, the sequel to the divisive modern masterpiece? Yeah. He's saying Breath of the Wild was divisive. That's the first time <laughs> I'm hearing anybody call Breath of the Wild divisive. Breath of the Wild was unanimously yeah. a good game. And like, <laughs> look, I'm not the biggest Zelda expert, but I know Zelda fans are very particular with their games. Yeah. And like nobody said anything bad about Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I mean, there's, Some, like, little criticisms, but, like, yeah. for the most part, everybody's like, this game's <laughs> fucking great. Yeah. And, again, us, we're not, we're not Zelda, Zelda people. people. I did not like any Zelda game yeah. except for Link to the Past. Yeah. Uh, and I loved Breath of the Wild. And now I love Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. So, if I could like it, I feel like it's it's anybody's cup of tea. Yeah. But that's very strange. This no. guy gave it a fucking 60. Well, I mean, good for him for sticking to his guns. And hey, saying, he's like, going to be popular now because he's the one guy yeah. who gave it a 60. Um, I mean, look, he's without, well within his right to say that the game is not his cup of tea. And right. Not all that good. And I think, honestly, that's not a bad thing to have one person, like, honestly say that they didn't find the game all that interesting. Because when... Because when you start to see everybody give it like nines and tens, especially the amount of tens they're giving it, that becomes a bit sus, if you ask me. Yeah. You know? No, I I understand. Uh, this is Gfinity? Yeah. What other reviews do they have? I have no <laughs> idea. I've never even heard of them until now. I remember this happening with a different game. Uh, there was like one holdout that gave it a really low score, and you look at the score, and they're all low. They, yeah. they, they like lo- review things pretty low, or... 
they'll review things uh completely against the grain so that they stand out and yeah people will click on it and say their name on a podcast yeah. you know so it's possible that they're doing it on purpose it's also mm-hmm. possible they genuinely didn't like the game i kind of i'm gonna leave this in a tab because i kind of want to hear what it is yeah for the most part it's the exact same biodiverse world you explored all those years ago only with more natural caves a sprawling underground chasm and frankly too many rock formations in the sky to really care about <coughs> new tales are spun throughout it yet each one has a disappointing air of familiarity Breath of the Wild's fiddly controls are pushed further to the breaking point, all in an effort to stack more systems on top of those that split the fan base almost as much as Toon Link. Toon Link was a different a different time and a different place. We were all young and stupid back then. He's really projecting his own yeah his own experience onto everybody. <laughs> he's 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 keeps saying he keeps trying to rile up the fan base. He's yeah. trying to like yeah. I, I will say though, I don't love the controls. Right. I think the controls are a little fiddly, like like he yeah. says. So there is some again, there's merit to criticism. I don't think this game is perfect. Right. But I think it is uh I think the hype a lot of the hype is warranted. Yeah. Which is well, I like you said, the game isn't perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think criticism like what this guy's providing, as out there as it may be, I think is important to remind people that it's not perfect. Because now that, you know, how I don't know how many websites are giving this game a 10. And, you know, and part of this is games media's fault that they've mythologized the 10 out of 10 because they, they used to give it out so rarely. Mm-hmm. So everybody just assumed that that meant the game is perfect and no game is perfect. So no game gets a 10. Right. And now all of a sudden, you know, we're starting to see more 10s getting thrown out left and right. Every Grand Theft Auto gets a 10. Every Zelda game gets a 10 every mario game gets a 10 of uh, you know things like that and it's starting to like really make you wonder like why are they giving out so many 10s now of uh, what makes this game a 10 but not that game yeah and, and they really haven't done no matter how much they try like they really haven't done anything to demystify the 10 out of 10 you know yeah. I, mean, I mean when we say that we're kind of just thinking of ign because well, IGN is the one that like it, it seems like their scores uh are set on like it seems like they set a standard scale for scores. They did. Well, see back in the day it was them and GameSpot. Right. Were the two big online websites and they gave they uh graded on a 10 point scale. Slick in the chat says you guys are 10s. <laughs> I am like I'm like a yeah, give them the Arkansas full for this. 10. <laughs> I'm like an Arkansas 10, but more of like a, I guess I'm a New York 6. All right. New York 7 if I lose weight. I'll take that. So uh, <laughs> so IGN and GameSpot, like they, they set the standard for like what deserves a 10. Because back in the day, the only two games that got 10s, this is like the late 90s, early 2000s. The only two games that got 10s was Ocarina of Time and Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. And then the entire PS2 uh, original Xbox GameCube era, nothing got a 10. Yeah. And maybe been like one random game here or there, but like nothing, there's no consensus on like what a 10 out of 10 would be. And that was the generation of GTA 3, Metroid Prime, Resident Evil 4, the original God of War, the original Halo. All these games that like in hindsight could warrant that kind of grade. Half-Life 2, yeah. you know, didn't get it. And then you cut to a little bit later, uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 gets a 10. Grand Theft Auto 4 gets a 10. Grand Theft Auto 5 gets a 10. Red Dead 2 gets a 10. All the Zeldas get a 10. And it's it starts to become like, why are these games, why are you now opening this mythical score up to more games? Because a lot of those games, Metal Gear Solid 4 is not a 10. You know, GTA 4 is not a 10. My biggest skepticism at the time mm-hmm. was uh, Super Mario Galaxy. I think 2. I think it was the second one. Yeah. Uh, we weren't playing a lot of Wii stuff at the time. Yeah. And I was working at GameStop and I heard that it got a 10 yeah. at, from IGN. And I was like, no way a Mario. No, this is a 10. Like the, the mythical 10 yeah. that, that we've never had. You're mm-hmm. giving it to a Wii game? There's no way. Yeah. And then I played it. There was like a midnight launch, probably a Call of Duty or something. Yeah. And I had to 
we had two hour like a two hour break in the day. Yeah. So I just played it on the kiosk. It was fucking awesome. Right. The I game mean, was sick. I mean, and the, I was like, all right, I get it. The game, the game can be very good, honestly. Yeah. But like, when you spend so long, you know, saying that like, you know, very few games get a ten. If you're yeah. as good as Ocarina of Time, or again, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast, <laughs> you know, if I you're kind in of that league. I kind of get what they're what they're saying though. Like, like, like it could be uh, to, to us. 10 seems like a perfect score. Yeah. But to them, they're trying to say that 10 is just like nothing is ever perfect. So this is as perfect as you're going to get. Right. You know, I understand that. But like, but at the same time, they spent so long. Yeah. Like holding that score back. Yeah. Because like I said, there are a lot of games that, you know, I think deserve a 10. Yeah. But and I'm sure a lot of people think deserve a 10, but they didn't give those out to games. Right. Again, Metroid Prime, Grand Theft Auto 3. Uh, Resident Evil 4. Someone in the chat said Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Uh, yeah, Turbo M- Moogle. I want to say that is, uh, I think Jeff Grubb was saying that that is, I, that is his contender for the greatest game of all time. Tony Hawk 2. And I think there is merit to that. Yeah. Where Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is yeah, the greatest absolutely. game of all time. I think that that is, and we're talking about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 versus Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> and there is a real conversation yes. to be had. So the last thing, like, there are so few 10s. When you start labeling this game and that game a 10, yeah. you know, now, now you have, like, all these other games that are considered classics. And even games that predate, you know, internet, yeah. the internet grading, you know, Hydra or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, that didn't get 10 out of 10s. Would they have gotten them uh, back then? Would they have gotten them now? Yeah, I don't know. I play that guess the game every day. Yeah, uh, you play that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and every game that's on there, uh, they give you the Metacritic score, and a lot of times there is no Metacritic yeah. score. Or I'll see the Metacritic. The Metacritic score will be for when it was released, and I'll look at it and I'll be like, "What? Yeah, and that game got that score, or mm-hmm. that game didn't get a score." You know, yeah. it, it's it's interesting to see what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah. What are we talking about? Uh, Zelda, right? Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> it's got. Oh, a lo- I want to say another uh, reviewer that gave it a seventy. Okay, is the only two mixed scores are a seventy and a sixty. Seventy is from a website called But Why Though, <laughs> which sounds like they probably just. Give that everything. sounds like a humor site. Yeah, it sounds like they probably just give everything like a skeptic, skeptical. Yeah, they look at things with a skeptical lens, and again, I think that there is. There, there yes. is criticism to be Absolutely, had here. Like, yeah. like I, I think there's some very questionable choices with the control scheme. I said right. the controls are a little janky. Uh, you can't really remap the controls. Everybody keeps telling me you can swap, run, and jump, mm-hmm. but that doesn't fix, doesn't fix yeah. things. Going between playing Tears of the Kingdom and Resident Evil Four yeah. broke my brain a little bit because. <laughs> Zelda, you have to mash run to run, kind of like in yeah, Grand yeah. Theft Auto. You have to mash A. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and in and in uh, Resident Evil 4, you press in the thumbstick, yeah. which is how it should be. So when I got Chainsaw Man running after me, yeah. I'm accidentally crouching and mashing A <laughs> over and over again. So I do have an idea of redoing all of the controls. Uh-huh. With the uh Ape Do Ultimate controller. Okay. I'm going to s- remap the run button to the left stick click, but make it a turbo fire. Got it. So it turbos. Yeah. But we'll 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 see how that works. Can you just hold A in Tears of the Kingdom? Uh maybe. You probably can. I mean, but, but actually it probably makes you go faster. It feels better. I don't know why. <laughs> it might it might yeah. look like it's going faster. I don't know. Um. So then, yeah. I then instead of having the turbo fire, I can just hold the left stick in. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier. Mm-hmm. I know in Grand Theft Auto, you can mash it, or I think you can hold it, but mashing it is faster. Yeah, mashing it makes you like sprint. Yeah. Uh, that's the drawback of Link being able to do a million different things. Yeah. Also, uh, I find myself like doing the ultra hand ability, which is the thing where you pick things up. Yeah. Uh, you do that. And then when you like panic out of it, I end up like hitting the R button, but R 
is to throw your primary weapon. So a sword, it just you just pick it up and chuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like so when you're panicking <laughs> playing the mm-hmm. game, you end up really screwing yourself over. But anyway, uh I think that a lot of these insanely high scores are kind of warranted coming from somebody who's usually pretty harsh on stuff right. and pretty skeptical of a lot of stuff. I think that there is a a great game here that is still flawed. I won't I refuse to say it's perfect. Yeah. But uh it is very goddamn close because of what they were able to do. Even right. though this is built off of the bones of a game they already made, they changed so much of it. Yeah. Which you know, I, which is what a sequel should be. It should build upon what the original was, and it's very clear that they took what they had that they knew was already successful mm-hmm. and said, "What can we do to add to this experience?" A- and and what they added completely changed the way that you play, right? It, which is the absolutely the way that you should approach a sequel, especially if you're reusing. Um, I don't want to say assets because they added a lot of assets. Yeah. Uh, they're reusing the bones of the, of the original game. Right. I guess like an engine. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's this engine, but like they added to the engine. Right. Um, let's talk about the, the, the devs saying that cheating is fun because yes. that, that goes into how you play the game and what made, makes it now so different yes. than the original game. Look at these handsome men. Uh, where'd you put the, I put it up at the top. It okay, might I take see. a second to yeah. show up on yours. I got it. There you go. Jackson was within arm's length of this man. Wow. Now Numa at the, at where? the, Oh, in New York, they were in New York. Oh, they wow. went to, they were at the, uh, 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 Look at that. What do you call it? The, 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 the yeah, the yeah. midnight release. Oh wow! They have like a whole big thing that I didn't know they were gonna have. If I knew that, I might have. <laughs> yeah. I might have gone. Get a picture with Al Numa. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which was released Friday on the Switch, brings players back to Hyrule, uh, the Hyrule Breath of the Wild. This time, however, there are sky archipelagos of floating rocks to explore, along with a vast underground realm that spans almost as much real estate as the surface above. What's more, players are borderline game. Borders have play. Uh, players have borderline game breaking abilities with which to construct vehicles, craft weapons, manipulate time and swim through ceilings. The whole game is basically just trying to break it. Right. Like you're spending the whole game trying to find the limits of, yeah. of the game and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Uh, in other words, Nintendo made a massive open world sequel in which it hands you cheat codes right out of the gate. Giving players this much freedom pr- presents the developers with a fair amount of risk. With every new ability, they uh, they were giving players more ways to sequence break, wreak havoc on enemies, and if not play God, then at least come pretty damn close. After playing nearly 100 hours of the game ourselves, we at Polygon sat down with longtime Zelda producer Eiji Aonuma and game director Hidemaru uh, Fujibayashi, nailed it, uh, to discuss the big swings they you took. Did, you did nail that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the big swings they took and the massive sequel, whether the Majora's Mask comparisons are overblown, and whether we might see Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf gracing the silver screen anytime soon. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, where was it? Uh, Nick Tendo in the chat says, cheating is fun unless it's mods. Because <laughs> Nintendo doesn't like mods. Yes. Uh, or you're that one guy who's like, if you use cheat codes, you didn't learn anything, you didn't grow as a human. You remember that? <laughs> that was a whole thing. Yeah. No. Uh, also, the rewind feature. Yes. Rewind yes. is is, is That's for bitches. I, I will. Uh, so I actually, you currently can't type rewind. Try it. In 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 our Twitch chat. Our Twitch chat. Okay. Go to our Twitch chat and type rewind. See what happens. Okay. Rewind. Enter. It, it, it worked. Work. Oh, you're okay. a mod. Am I not? Uh, okay. Other people, yeah, it won't work. For, see, no one else can type rewind. They have really? to do it in all weird ways. Because I banned it in the chat. Because when I play freaking uh, uh, Mario three on Nintendo Switch Online, yeah. the 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 Mario Advance thing, yeah, yeah, everybody kept fucking telling me to rewind. <laughs> it was getting so frustrating that I yeah. had to, I had to ban it. I had okay. to ban people that told me to rewind because no rewind is rewinding is for bitches and losers. Until I stopped streaming the game and I wanted to play it while I was on a flight <laughs> and I was getting frustrated and I just started fucking rewinding. If the, or save stating. Save states might also be banned. I'm not sure. If the developers give you the ability to use something 
for their game, then it's perfectly within your right to use that in the but game. That includes rewind features. No, that includes it's going the, up through the ceiling. The, the rewind feature, though, was added in Nintendo Switch Online. So yeah. I, I want the pure experience. You can have that. But they also gave you the option to rewind it. They right. gave you the option to rewind it. And you know it. why? Because we're so frail now these days. Yes. <laughs> no. Yeah. Really, though, like back then, it used to be, you know, this is the one game my mom bought me for yeah. a Game Boy Advance. I'm going to brute force this. I'm going to play the same level all day and all night until yeah. I beat it. But these days, it's like, just get me to the end of it. Yeah. And. <laughs> I started to feel that when I got towards the ends of those e-reader levels. Yeah. I was just like, I'm using save states. I can't do this <laughs> shit anymore. Anyway, here's how you break Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, hold on. See, with I use three fingers to swipe to go back and forth between screens, and now that I have two fingers... <laughs> you have to use your pinky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, should I just skip right to the... I should have... Get to, get to the good shit. All right. Hold on. Where is it? Uh, why didn't why why didn't I do this? Okay, here we go. This is talking about okay. If you both had to pick of a favorite uh, from the new abilities, which would it be? Uh, Fuji Bayashi said, "I'd probably have to go with Recall. It seems very very convenient." Aonuma, I guess for me it would have to be Ascend. I'm somebody who you know, if I want to find a way to cheat, I like I like to kind. Oh, sorry. If I like to find a way to cheat, I like to do that kind of gameplay. And so once I had the Ascend ability, I really was looking forward uh, for all sorts of different places to make use of it. Did that come up during development? The fact that you, you're you basically giving players cheat codes 10 minutes into the game? Uh, Fujibayashi. You know, that reminds me. I don't think we're... Sh I don't think we've shared this uh, anywhere else, but the Ascend ability was actually the result of a debug feature that we have in the game. When I was exploring the caves, I would get uh, I would get to the destination where I was trying to get to, and once I checked it out, I would just use the debug code to get to the top. And I thought, well, maybe this is something that we can uh, that we can be usable in the game. And it was the right. And it was right around the time that Mr. Aonuma said, it's a pain to go back. And to be blunt <laughs> and honest, cheating can be fun. So that's why we decided to drop it in there. And and they're right. Yeah. Like it 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 does it's awesome. It feels yeah. awesome. There there was a part in the game right before I fought that giant boss mm -hmm. uh where there was another boss uh that I shouldn't have it wasn't I guess it's a boss. It comes at you really fast right. and one shots you because I only have four hearts. Yeah. So once it sees you, you're dead basically. Yeah. So I was in a maze with like an overhang and it saw me and it got this close and I recalled and I, yeah. just, I just fucked off out yeah. of there. And it was, I felt so awesome for doing that. Nice. Also, uh, the recall, did I say recall? I meant to send. Yeah. But the recall ability also breaks stuff. Yeah. Because you can use that to platform. You can hold something in the air, drop it, stand on it, and then hit recall, and it'll put yeah. it back up and stuff. So all of these different tools make it so you can uh, break the game. But really, yeah. you're, it, it, the game is designed in a way where... I've never I've done all of these different things and I've never felt like I did something I wasn't supposed to. Like I know I'm f I got to an area where I probably shouldn't be, but I feel like the game is designed in a way where it's fun. Like they're cool with it. Yeah. Like you're, it's cool that you could that you that you do that. Yeah. There again is just a million different ways to get to where you need to be. There's a yeah. million different ways to perform any task in the game. So um that all of these tools were were such a good idea. I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's what they have to say. Cheating is fun. Do it, everybody. <laughs> everybody do it. Everybody on do your it. uh in your games on your wives. Yeah. <laughs> um, broadly speaking, were there any ideas during development that you had to put aside, or any concepts that you didn't get as deep into as you would have liked? Things you might want to explore in future installments. Yeah. Uh. Fuji Bayashi. I have a few in mind, but I'm not sure if I can share them. Aonuma, yeah, no. That would cause <laughs> that would cause trouble for me. So please don't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to ruin surprise for people. 
I remember when Breath of the Wild came out, like afterwards they did a post-mortem on it and they showed all the concept art and one of them was uh, for us like a sci-fi take on Zelda. Yeah. I want to see that. I want to see that. That, and there, that and would there, be cool. And there was the like 80s motorcycle like yeah. Link. That was cool. Yeah. That like, would be do cool. Do that, you know? Yeah. Go really all out with Zelda. I like those ideas, yeah. yeah. I'm not like sucked into the story of the game. Yeah. Like, like I've, I don't, I don't love that. People do People end get... up talking a lot in the game. Like, yeah. like there's, I mean, there's not that much story, so it's, it's fine. That's why I'm like able to like handle yeah. it. Um, but I, you know, pe- there is some dialogue where it's like, all right, hurry up. I'm good. I, yeah. But you do need to pay attention because yeah. they, 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 it mixed into the dialogue that you're mashing through. There will be a little bit of information that is telling you where to go. Right. So, so you do need to pay attention to the droning dialogue sometimes. Yeah. Well, I mean, the story in Zelda games are like, it's a big deal. Let's not forget for years, people were trying to figure out the Zelda timeline just based on like all the random stuff that were in the games that didn't have any dialogue. Also, this tells you everything everyone was trying to figure out about the Zelda timeline. It <laughs> It is the... It, it, it lays it all out for you, basically. Oh, in the very beginning of the game. It's okay. like, this is the fucking timeline, right. and this is what's gonna happen, and it's all fucked now. Yeah. And we gotta fix it. And and you remember how in Breath of the Wild there were the memories? Yeah. The memories are showing you more of how the timeline is. Got it. So... It's everything every Zelda fan ever wanted. Got it. <laughs> so my understanding is Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom takes place thousands of years after the three separate timelines from Ocarina of Time merge back. Sure. Do they explain how they merge back or is that going to be another so, so they kind of explain in the very beginning and it's kind of in the trailers and people kind of inferred this. That uh, there is, and I think other games inferred this too, but there's just a vicious loop where uh, Zelda, Link, and Ganon are damned to yeah do the same thing over and over and over again. Got it. There's always going to be the 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 power guy, the the wisdom, the and wisdom courage, and courage, yeah. and they're always going to fight, and it's all it's just always going to happen. Got it. Um, they kind of explain the founding of Hyrule. Yeah. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Like they they tell you the what started all of this shit. Um what else? The very beginning of the game, the first temple you see in the very beginning is the Temple of Time. Okay. So you go to and it's a completely different Temple of Time yeah. than Ocarina, but you go to the Temple of Time. Uh so there it, the it's all lore. This whole game is is Zelda yeah. lore. Um Yeah. So it's the story is actually pretty good. It's when they just, they kind of talk in circles and like go around. And it's like, okay, I know. Like, I get it. I'm not stupid. Like, yeah. I don't need all of this mysticism. Like, you could just, <laughs> you know, could have just shown me. You mm-hmm. didn't have to say it three times in three different ways. Uh, anyway, is it not 12 years between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? I heard five. Between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, I have no idea. I, I heard, heard it was longer. <laughs> between Breath of the Wild and Tears of the yeah. Kingdom? No, it's 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 a couple years. Okay. Um, I mean, Breath of the Wild, there's a hundred. It's Breath of the Wild spans a hundred years. Because yeah. they go to sleep and then they wake up a hundred years yeah, later. Yeah. Um, but Tears of the Kingdom, there's a couple of years between... Mm-hmm. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Because, you know, Link and Zelda are living happily ever after. And, yeah. then, and then they come across, I think, what I think is Ganon. Mm-hmm. The the little skeleton guy, Ganon. Yeah. And they disturb him. And it fucks everything up again. And then that's how the game yeah, starts. Yeah. It's not long. I'm pretty sure it's five years. Um, Actually, you know what? I don't know anything. Somebody told me it was five <laughs> years. Now somebody in the chat saying 12, and now people are saying months or years, so I don't know. Pura's age throws everyone off. Yeah, there's a character called Pura, and mm-hmm. she's young now. Okay. Because she used to be an old lady. Now she's young. I think she did some mystical age shit on herself. Got it. So I don't, I don't know. My bad, it's three to five years. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Now. Wikipedia says sometime. It takes place sometime after Breath of the Wild. 
Breath of the Wild Pearl. Oh, she's a kid in the first game. Oh. Oh. So she went even younger? No, no, no. She's no, she looks like she looks like that in the first game, and now okay. she looks like that. Okay. Yeah. That feels weirder. Yeah. I don't like that anymore. <laughs> I thought she de-aged. Yeah. You're right about the magic, though. She magically becomes a full... I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, You know what? Speaking of that, we can bring this up right now. I was going to... I put this in the notes for the Nintendo podcast, but I okay. actually don't think we're going to talk about that. Dexerto tweeted, Zelda fans, we see you, and it is Pornhub's... Search results, <laughs> top Zelda related searches on Pornhub. Legend of Zelda, Zelda Hentai, Zelda Cosplay. Number four is Pura Zelda. Oh boy. People love Pura. Yep. Uh Zelda Breath of the Wild. Is a link of Legend of Zelda Rule 34. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Princess Zelda. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Paya. Who is Paya? I did see somewhere that like uh search um uh, search requests for naughty zelda pictures have skyrocketed oh of course. last week there's paya i haven't run into paya yet okay get laid percent <laughs> zelda speed run where you sleep with pa okay okay All right. also you start the game off no clothes i don't you you well, the first game was like that yeah yeah <laughs> yes in this game, you wake up and there's like all these robots around you, and it's uh -huh. implied that they take all of your clothes for no reason. Right. Um, I still don't have a shirt. I played the game for like 10, yeah. 12 hours. Just nothing. Haven't been able to find a shirt. I, like I got, I got like a like a toga. I feel like at this point you don't want to. That's I want to. <laughs> I want the shirt. I have like a toga thing, but it's not. Yeah. You know, I he's, he's, I'm running around the cold area. You yeah. Know? Pura was a normal age before Link went to sleep a hundred for a hundred years. She accidentally turned herself into a kid. She's normal. What the fuck? What? I mean, people are really into this deep lore shit. <laughs> this is this explains why I was so confused about it. She was a what's a normal age, by the way? Yeah. Explain that part to me. I think they mean normal age. What she's supposed to be? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Of the three, Sheikah, who experienced the Great Calamity, Pura is the oldest at 124, four years older than her than her both her fellow researcher Robbie and younger sister Impa. Uh, oh, Impa is the old lady. Yes. This is so fucking confusing. <laughs> That's her younger sister. Yes. That's Impa. Yes. That's her younger sister. Yes. Woman this is this this doesn't make any goddamn sense. Despite this, she has the appearance of a six-year-old in the first game, I guess. The result of an age reversal. I don't like this. There's a age reversal which she details in her diary. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> don't like it. We're moving on. It doesn't have to make sense, Bob. The game is a ten out of ten. Right. There's nothing wrong yeah. with this game. Yeah. Very, uh, very Japanese. Yes. <laughs> That's very Japanese. All right. What? Oh, we talked about the reviews. Yes. Um, things in the wrong spot. Here's a question that people keep coming up. Do you have to play Metroid Dread before you play Series of the Kingdom? No, you have to watch the Boss Baby movie. Okay. Yeah, in order to understand. No, but seriously, do you need to play Breath of the Wild before playing Tears of the Kingdom? I will say no. Okay. But it helps, obviously, because right. I think Breath of the Wild does a better job of teaching the mechanics right out of the gate, but also kind of not, because they're in Breath of the Wild. There's like a, I mean, it, the Great Plateau teaches you a lot. Yeah. And then right when you get out of the Great Plateau, I think there's a there's a shrine that's right there that teaches you some combat stuff. Yeah. But I remember watching a Twitch streamer that was like like hundreds of hours into the game, mm -hmm. and they didn't know that you can parry. Yeah. Like, like lasers and shit. Uh, because they never hit that uh, that shrine, so that same thing could happen in this yeah. in this new game. So I, I, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you don't need it, but obviously it would help it a helps. little bit with, okay. with combat stuff. Like Hannah had no idea what she was doing mm -hmm. with combat or whatever, but she figured it out. She just got there eventually. Yeah. 
Anyway, what, is it, what do they say about it? Uh, the TLDR is no. Uh, it may be nice to play Breath of the Wild before Tears of the Kingdom, but it's not necessary. In fact, playing Breath of the Wild and heading straight into Tears of the Kingdom might be detrimental to your experience with the new game. Tears of the Kingdom is indeed a sequel to Breath of the Wild, so it's not a standalone game. It picks up shortly after Breath of the Wild and a change in expanded Hyrule. Tears of the Kingdom can be considered an iteration on Breath of the Wild. Some would say it's the final draft of the concept Nintendo put out in 2017. There is a sameness between the two games. Controls are similar, but expanded with new abilities. Hyrule has changed too, uh, but the core of it remains the same. Characters overlap with their stories from Breath of the Wild slipping into Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Polygon Guides writer Johnny Yu uh, said that playing Breath of the Wild so close to Tears of the Kingdom could limit the way you play Tears of the Kingdom. You may get too used to Breath of the Wild's abilities. Tears of the Kingdom could feel like Breath of the Wild DLC rather than a new game. Polygon Reviews editor no. Mike uh, Mike Mahardy agreed, but added that if you have played Breath of the Wild, you'll appreciate how Nintendo morphed Hyrule more and tweaking existing locations and the maps if the map is fresh in your mind. I disagree with uh, that first statement. How playing uh, Breath of the Wild might affect the way you play Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, no, I'll, I'll say that if you play Breath of the Wild, you're going to... Uh, the Tears of the Kingdom mechanics will completely change and you might be used to the original mechanics, but that's like kind of the point. The point right. is like you have Breath of the Wild and then you play Tears of the Kingdom and then it opens up all this other shit you can do because the mechanics are so, right, you know, god -like, like Like they give you like god powers. But I, I get what he's saying because like, you know, I'm playing Resident Evil 4 and I played the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake and I played mm -hmm. Resident Evil 4 countless times and in the remake they had a parry mechanic and an evade mechanic i never press it i never yeah. use it because like my mind isn't wired to do that in a resident evil game yeah so i have to like retrain myself to hit circle every time it comes up so i can avoid getting hit i'd say in this case you're you're forced to use the mechanic like like in breath of the wild you have the magnet yeah you have the bombs in this, you don't have those. You now have the recall ability, the ascend ability, yeah. and the ultra hand and stuff like that. So, and the ultra hand is kind of just an extension of the magnet ability. Right. It's just instead of metal stuff, it's, it's everything. everything. Um. So, I'd say if you play Breath of the Wild and then go to Tears of the Kingdom, it will just be more. I I, I don't think it's gonna break your brain. I don't think it's yeah. gonna confuse you. But uh, the thing I disagreed with was uh, Tears of the Kingdom could feel like Breath of the Wild DLC rather than a new game. I think that's what it looks like Yeah. before you play it. Right. But if you play it, I don't think you'll feel like it's DLC because right. I didn't feel like that at all. It feels like a completely different game. Yeah. It looks like DLC on the surface but then once you start playing it it you're you start thinking about things way differently than i ever did playing breath of the wild right um is that it uh yeah yeah that's pretty much it okay. uh so yeah i'd say i uh, people in the ch a lot of people in the chat were saying play breath of the wild first uh quad man says majora's mask first <laughs> um i'm going to say i think I struggle with recommending people play Breath of the Wild. I I think if you love Zelda, you should absolutely play Breath of the Wild yeah. first because Tears of the Kingdom feels that much better that you're going to be upset if you play Breath of the Wild after. So mm -hmm. if you know you're definitely going to want to play Breath of the Wild, definitely play that first. But I don't think you need to play Breath of the Wild first because that's a 90-hour commitment. Yeah. And I don't think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I think just... You don't need any of that. You can just yeah. skip right to Tears of the Kingdom and be totally happy and fine. Uh, Turbo Moogle called it uh, Breath of the Breath of the Wild roster update. I like that. You no. start calling it that. No, it is not that. Uh, all right, Zelda movie. Yes, all this talk about you know Tears of the Kingdom being very successful, and the Mario movie did just cross a billion dollars. Um, so in that interview with Polygon, they asked. Does the recent success of the Mario movie have you excited for a pros uh, prospect of a Zelda adaptation? This picture that they used is awesome. Is this from the manga? Yes. It's Viz Media. Ah. Uh, so Awanuma-san said, I have to say, I am interested, for sure. 
but it's not just me being interested in something that makes things happen, unfortunately. <laughs> and then um, Fujibayashi followed up by saying, uh, maybe the voice of the fans is what's important here. <laughs> so who's Fujibayashi? The director of the game. He directed the game. Yeah. Aonuma. What? Now he produces. Uh, Aonuma okay. directed uh, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. Uh... Not Breath of the Wild? No. So he Because I know he had a lot to do with it, though. Yeah. So at, a, at one point, what did he direct? Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and then Skyward Sword handed off to somebody else. Oh, so, so Aonuma... Aonuma directed all the ones we hate. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So it, it's like what happened with Mario. So like Miyamoto originally like designed them, and then at a certain point he stepped back to be producer, and someone else took over. That's what happened here. Miyamoto did Zelda, then he stepped back, Aonuma took over, then he stepped back, and someone else took over. But Aonuma is still heavily involved. Okay. Aonuma is still basically the leader of the Zelda team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Proven Potato says, sorry if you already answered this, but what happened with Will's finger? Uh, Nothing. You're, you're seeing things. My fingers <laughs> are fine. I was going to say, he pulled it out of your ass, but <laughs> <laughs> that, that seemed to... A little aggressive. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> he cut his finger and he's wearing a weird yeah. sock on it for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> Do I judge you with the things you put on your fingers? <laughs> Jim Slatters this up or whatever says, uh, reposting, fun fact, while working for Capcom, Hidemaro Fubayashi used to be the director of the Oracle games, Four Swords and Minish Cap. Oh, so oh, he also worked on a lot yes. of Zelda games. Then he directed Skyward Sword. Okay. When he worked in Nintendo, he directed Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild. Okay. Got it. That's pretty okay. He's got a pretty good roster of games yeah. under his belt. Uh so what was up there? Thanks for <laughs> So that's what was up there. Thanks for clearing that up. No problem, dude. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think that absolutely there's going to be some sort of Zelda movie or something. I would have thought that would be the next one. Yeah. But there's a lot of evidence pointing towards Donkey Kong, oh, yeah. which I think it's... is kind of dumb. I think it should have been Zelda. Yeah, I think it I, should be Zelda. I feel like I get what they're doing. They wanted to establish Donkey Kong in this mo- in the Mario movie and then like spin him off into something else. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, you know, Nintendo is so varied that you could just, you know, Mario movie, and then, like, in two years, do the Zelda movie, and then in two years, the Metroid movie. Like, you can keep them separate. Not everything has to be a cinematic universe. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Until they make a Smash Brothers movie. Yes. <laughs> the whole, like, Smash Brothers Ultimate, like, story yeah. with, like, that tra- the cinematic trailer mm-hmm. is fucking awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that would make a really cool movie. You would run into the problem, though, like, do you include Sonic? Do you include Snake? Yeah. You... Yeah, you, you do. All right. Figure it out. <laughs> also, like, I don't care how they got there. Right. Like, I don't care how Snake is hanging out with Mario. Right. I don't need any of that. Just put him there. You you <laughs> do know that there's going to be at least a half hour explanation of how they got there. I know. And I don't want that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh... Sony, Microsoft, congratulate Nintendo. Yeah, this is always nice to see when, like, game rivals, like, say, hey, good job, guy. Uh, Nintendo has been receiving messages of congratulations across the industry regarding Tears of the Kingdom, including messages from PlayStation and Xbox. Both the official PlayStation and Xbox Twitter accounts tweeted out commemorate uh, commemorating the launch day. While the three companies are actively competing in the home console hardware market, it's always refreshing to see the companies publicly support one another every now and then, especially when a highly anticipated product is released. Xbox tweeted, It's good to be back in Hyrule. Congrats, Nintendo of America, on Tears of the Kingdom. And Sony followed up with, Have fun up there, Hylians. That's crazy that Sony did that. Yes. I, I yeah. Microsoft just is taking the L. Yeah. They're, they're, they're cool with it. PlayStation doesn't seem like the type. I mean, I know, like, I've seen, like, the Sony Twitter account, like, congratulate Microsoft on the Series X and S launch. That's before they tried to take Call of Duty from them. Mm-hmm. And, like, M- Microsoft has done the same. It's just, you know, I think we're at a point where, like, the 
the quote unquote console wars are like raging up again, mm-hmm. especially because of the the Activision Blizzard deal going on, because of the you know the Switch is showing its age and like people are sort of like not lose faith in it, but like they're getting anxious as to what the next step is. You know, the fact that the PlayStation Five is selling as well as it is. So to come back and see that like in the, at the end of the day, like everybody is really on the same team, the team of video games. So it's just it's, it's yeah, depression. and they know that they know that Nintendo's in like another yeah their own little world exactly, yeah. and and they know even though they're in their own little world, like people are going to be spending the weekend playing Zelda. Yeah, they're not going to be playing their games. Yeah, I did see somewhere like Tears of the Kingdom is already like the best selling game of the year right now. It's it's sold more on Switch than Hogwarts Legacy did on three systems during its launch. Oh my, or God. something like that. It, I'd imagine, yeah, it's it's sold very well. Uh, I also wanted to point out that um, it's it's this weird, unique thing that I've never seen before. Like I've, there's always people that like don't want to watch streams or don't want to engage in the content of a new game because yeah. they don't want it to be spoiled for them. Right, and that's fair. But I think that the hype around it kind of outweighs the people who don't want it to be spoiled for them. Mm-hmm. Cause maybe people don't have the money for it yeah. and they want to just consume the content in, in uh, anticipation for buying it eventually themselves. Right. Um, that's not the case with tears of the kingdom, tears of the kingdom. No one wants to see anything. They want to experience it all for themselves. And I think that means that they've already purchased it right. and they're actively trying to experience it for themselves. Right. I've never seen something like this where viewership is so low on a new game because mm-hmm. people want to experience it themselves. And also it's like super saturated because everyone's playing yeah. it and everyone's making content around it. It's very it's it's very interesting the way yeah. that I think that it I completely understand that it is the probably already the best selling game of the year. Yeah. It will be eventually and it will at award season it'll, it'll fucking win all the shit just yeah. like breath of the wild unless it's you know the teen choice awards oh yeah <laughs> that's foreshadowing for something this week is that this week Wait, oh, what you, is this you week? tell me the teen choice awards no 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 uh, uh, something we did at a coffee shop oh um that is actually next week. Okay. Foreshadowing Wait. for next week. Will's on the non dental podcast. Hey! But it's next week. Uh, yeah, we were going to do it this week, but uh, we, ha- we have to talk about Zelda. Right. Right. Um, anyway, that wasn't the only company that uh, praised its rivals. I want to say uh, s- the official Steam Deck Twitter account. Okay. Uh, on Deck said, congratulations to Asus ROG on the announcement of the ROG Ally. We're excited to see PC handheld ecosystem continue to grow and for players to have more ways to play their games on the go. So they congratulated their direct Valve rivals. seems like the company that would absolutely do that. Yeah. I, I think for them, it's not about like people... I mean, obviously, they want people to buy the Steam Deck, but I think it's more about spreading the word of pc gaming in like different areas you know yeah valve i feel like genuinely wants just more people to valve seems like they made the steam deck to change the landscape and they did it and now other people are making it and they're like cool let's keep changing it competition's good whatever yeah but at the same time (laughs) they're benefiting yeah. Because the ROG ally can also play Steam games. Right. So so like the first thing I downloaded was Steam. In fact, yeah. it comes with Steam on. Yeah. So like uh they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh and ROG responded. I didn't know they responded. They said Get uh, fucked. <laughs> Fuck you, idiot. We're gonna be <laughs> better. Coming for you, old man. They said, Thank you. We're big fans of Valve and love that the openness of the PC platform allows gamers to bring their Steam libraries to devices like the Ally. They basically were like, yeah. We know what you're doing. Here's to the next chapter of handheld gaming. Oh, and there's Mr. Sujanu. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, it, it is really nice it, it it and it is nice that your steam games carry over and, and stuff. yeah um okay well, what, did we get any notification i haven't talked to you people in a while uh 
Tynology. Thank you for the 25 months. Soul Calibur was a masterpiece. It was. Look, look, I'm not knocking Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur was a, more, pro- probably the best game on the Dreamcast mm-hmm. for all being told. But like that that feels like an outlier as the of, of the type of game that would get a 10. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. it is a little bizarre. Yeah. I mean, look, if if you're building up a Dreamcast library, buy Soul Calibur. And if it's I think it's available like on modern systems now. You, you can play it. You're not going to call it a 10 now. But oh, back yeah. <laughs> in 1999, you know, you'll call it a 10. Uh, we also got Random Heart with 15 months. Bob, I'm so happy you're enjoying Tears of the Kingdom. Thanks, dude. It's, it's pretty good. And Alex Rihanna, thank you for the prime. Soul Calibur was the first game I got for my Dreamcast last year. It said Sui Kagura. It's amazingly good looking and playing. We have it, right? Don't we have it? I believe we do. got to pop that out. All of our games are spread out. I need, yeah, to, I need I, to just grab all of them. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, What's next? Uh, Next now, is... Now we have actual news. Uh, Next is uh, GQ. Speaking of like the greatest games of all time, GQ Magazine has decided we know what they are, and they put out their list of the top 100 uh greatest video games of all time we usually like to find these weird lists and rip them apart yes we could have made a whole episode about this i i i feel like this list in particular is rife for just being overly analyzed and like exactly exactly number 96 is the original super mario yeah what's what's ahead what's right ahead of it Ultima Underworld, the Stygian Abyss. What year did that come out? 92. Okay. Never heard of this game before. So, okay. I've heard of Ultima. I know Ultima Underworld. I don't know if it's that that came out in 92, which one it was. I don't think it was the one that came out in 92, but I know Ultima Underworld is often credited as the first first person video game, like even before Wolfenstein 3D. What year is it? 92? I think Wolfenstein 3D was 91, so it's not that one. Maze Ball. Is it Maze Ball or Face Ball? One of those. Maze Ball? No. Face Ball. Maze Face. Maze Face. What's the Game Boy I know what you're talking about. Game Boy. Is it Face 3D or something? Ball. Face 3D? Game Boy Face 3D. Wait, that's it. What is Faceball? Is it Faceball? I think it is. It I think it is Faceball. How come it didn't come up? Faceball. Yeah. Faceball 2000. Yeah. That's when did that come out? Oh, Midi Maze is actually the the one. That was Atari 1987. Oh. And then it says 91, 92, 93. Probably different releases of it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. specify what those releases right. are. So here's how here's how they put together this list. Let's okay. before we start going well, I mean we already know, spoiler alert, it's a wacky list. It's a wacky list, yeah. All right, so here's what they did. Mass Effect is number ninety two and Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, is not a good it's game. It's not good. No. Like I'm sorry it's not. Mass Effect two is where it gets better. Right. Mass Effect one, no. Yeah. Uh okay, so here's what they did. Uh according to GQ, we gave the industry a large we gave the industry at large a blank canvas on which to de- uh, determine their own criteria of best to see where the chosen games differ and where they're similar uh, to the traditionally accepted canon. That meant gathering together a massive collective of our favorite developers, streamers, directors, and journalists in the business. Think of it as an Avengers Assemble moment. I hate them. <laughs> I hate so them. So they got a bunch of influencers basically they got a, well if you if you scroll all the way down that'll tell you every single person who was involved in this and okay. it, it's a wide list it's like you got people from kind of funny got people from ign you got people who actually develop video games you know it, it's it's a it's a good group of people um to continue each voter had one task pick a personally ranked top 10 a game in the first uh, sorry a game in first receives 10 points a game in 10th place receives one point we invited 300 individuals to participate and received 239 finalists 
with an incredible 652 games receiving one vote or more. Our okay. winner not only received the most votes, but also placed in people's number one more than any other. Okay, so that actually is an interesting way to go about it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why this list ended up being very wacky because yes. it's people's personal choices or what their favorite games of yes. all time, and then or, that, or is it what they think is the best game of all time? It is the top ten best. They games were just time. allowed to do what it was. It's their own criteria for what they okay. think the ten best games of all time are. That yeah, could be personal. Gonna, that could be analytical. That could be whatever. Because I don't the, know if every, I would put Super Mario Brothers in my top 10 lists of the best games of all yeah, time. Yeah, because, like, when you start to think about, like, the greatest of all time... Yeah. Then, like, your personal opinions... Like, that becomes different... Yeah. ...from, like, your... Like, what you think is important. Because when you say greatest of all time, you're not just including, like, fun fact. You're also including about impact, uh, reception, uh, how, like, how people view it years after it came out. Yeah, you know, but not all of these people are going to think like that. True. There's going to be some yeah. of these people who do just say, right. I just personally like uh, uh, Kirby's Dream Course. I'm going to put it in number yeah. one. So I mean, I, so that's that's how you end up with Mario Odyssey at 87. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I skipped to the top 10. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. And the top, that's good. What if there's like a tie? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Pokemon the, the thing is, Gold and Silver is 76. Oh, my God. So the thing is, like, the top 10 alone tells you a lot. I have to scroll very far. Uh, so this uh, is the industry's favorite game. Yes. Ocarina of Time is number 13. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. These lists always have Ocarina at Ooh. number one. Here's, here's what irks me. Resident Evil 4, the original, mm -hmm. number, number 11. 11 just misses that's kind of very high yeah half-life 2 kind of agree yes no absolutely this is a top 10 of all time game for sure this game we talk about like games aren't perfect this is a game i would argue is as close to perfect as yeah. anyone has ever gotten. it was so close to perfect that playing it almost 15 years later felt like you were playing a brand new game yeah that's how ahead of its time this game was yeah so, uh, and then Dark Souls. Dark Souls, yes. Okay. Uh, Portal 2. Yes, Portal 2 is another one that's like yes. pretty close to perfect. Uh, Metal Gear Solid. I'll allow it. Yeah. That is a top 10. Mass Effect 2. There you go. Okay. I, I Fine. You know... <laughs> I, I haven't played Mass Effect 2. Right. I only played Mass Effect 1, which was bad. Yes. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> Kind of sullied my experience yeah. on Mass Effect a little bit. Uh, the Witcher Three. Okay, I did five. play that and I didn't love it. Would like even if you did, would you consider that the fifth best game of all time? I'm gonna say our experience with that game was probably not the best experience with right. the game. If it, we played it on PC with a mouse and keyboard, it probably would have been a little right. bit better. Uh, yeah, I don't. I I would have put something else here though. I yeah. wouldn't have put The Witcher anywhere near the top ten. Uh, number four is Bloodborne. Now I know people are really into this game. But yeah, is it top five? It feels weird to put Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like Bloodborne is the better Dark Souls. Right. So just put Bloodborne. But by the same token, Dark Souls was a watershed moment for video games. Dark yeah. Souls is the reason Souls-like is a genre. Right. But I think this did it better. Right. So do you include the one that did it better or do you include the one that did it originally? Because some people argue Dark Souls still does it better. When I'm thinking of best games of all time, mm -hmm. I'm thinking right now, what are the best games of all time? Yeah. My favorite is the original Super Mario Brothers. Do I think that's the best Super Mario Brothers game? No. Because mm -hmm. I think they've done it better. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I would say fuck Dark Souls. <laughs> Just Bloodborne. Yeah. You know? Tetris. Tetris is number three, which I think that is the perfect spot for Tetris. Tetris deserves a very Absolutely. high Absolutely. rating. Yes. Yes. yes.
I got a little shit for saying Tetris was the best Game Boy game uh, yesterday. Uh, what did I say instead? I think I think the chat bullied me into saying Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, number two is The Last of Us. All right, this I have a problem with. Okay, I think The Last of Us is a top ten. I think this is only on here because GQ realized that the TV show is based on a video game. <laughs> That's why I think this is here. A dad game for the ages. Naughty Dogs put a punt at a Cormac McCarthy inspired post apocalyptic travel traveluge travelogue travelogue was one of these GQ people know how to write. Huh? <laughs> uh, was one of the riskiest moves in the PlayStation history. With 32 million copies sold in the franchise so far and season two of a critically acclaimed HBO TV show already in the works, yeah. it's safe to say Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley's almighty gamble paid off. At least they credited both pl- both yeah. Uh, yeah. Druckmann and Straley. So, okay, number one's Brother Wild. Brother Wild, Wild. yeah. So if this had waited a week. <laughs> yeah, should have waited a week. <laughs> um, but did you notice in the top 10, there were only two games that were released before the year 2000? No, I didn't realize It was just that. Tetris and Metal Gear. Okay. you Like, that's... Two great games that did very much deserve it. Right, but like, you think about the entire history of video games. Also, only one first-party Nintendo game, if we're not including Tetris. <laughs> Is Tetris... Tetris doesn't count as a first-party Nintendo, does it? Because the no. developer is just like a weird Russian guy. Yeah. Well, it, technically, it's the Tetris company. Mm-hmm. So, but like, that version of Tetris was developed by Nintendo. Nintendo will occasionally get the Tetris license and do games for themselves. So, but, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the entire history of video games, and you're basically almost exclusively saying that the best games of all time came out in the 20th, the in the 21st century. Yeah. Well, that's... I think you're going to get that when you're thinking what is currently the greatest games of all time because games there were there it needed a lot of games needed a lot of room to figure themselves out. They needed a lot right. of room to to grow and I think right now we're in a pretty comfortable spot where uh games for the most part have pretty good control schemes, you know, yeah. like stuff like that. Like like there's a lot of rough edges that have gotten ironed out. So I think, yeah, it's going to sway more towards current games because there's a lot more now. There's so many. Right. And they're, they figured it out. They figured out how to make games. But I still feel like you're you're ignoring like the history. Because a, a, a top whatever of all time list is supposed to highlight the entire history. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're not going to put the classics... You know, much higher than like eighty, like ninety two for the original Super Mario Brothers. Like that, that's a very big skew towards like you know the modern era. Like games have not been good until today. That's the that's the message that I'm getting. Basically, there were some times where games were not true. <laughs> and I will say this right now: the best version of Metal Gear Solid is not the PlayStation version; it's the Twin Snakes on GameCube. Fight me. Yes. So uh, you 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 you're right. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I I do think Metal Gear Solid deserves a top ten for sure, but uh, I th- I think it might be the Twin Snakes. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right about that. Uh, they should have had a nomination round. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, th- you're gonna get a wacky list like this if you get two. Was it two hundred people? Something like that, yeah. When you get a a whole bunch of people and you make them give you their top ten, yeah, and vote on them that way, you know, you're gonna get some wacky shit, yeah. Um, but that's very interesting that like so many people had Mass Effect two in their top ten, yeah, and like some of these games and Dark Souls and Bloodborne, yeah, that and and The Witch, like it's it's very strange. I think it's also says a lot. That that many people had Tetris in their top. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is like, no, that might be a perfect game, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what else could you do? Yeah. Tetris effect. <laughs> like, yeah. like, there's very little room for improvement. In I a think game the, like, like the in like the forty years of Tetris, the biggest improvement they made 
was they added the little guide <coughs> at the bottom to show you where to put the Tetramino. <laughs> or storing the the That too, the, yeah. The guys. Because I remember when I, when Tetris 99 came out and I was yeah. playing it, the chat was yelling at me to start to like store the, the guys. And I was like, yeah. what are you fucking talking about? And realize that you could do that. Yeah. Because I'm so used to the Game Boy version. <laughs> Um, King Wizard says multiplayer. I, it had it. Did yeah, it have it? Yeah, the original yeah, it had multiplayer. It. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Interesting list. I think that you know, honestly, even though they did it in a weird and wacky way, I think they kind of get, they they got a lot right. right. I, 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 we we could sit here and clown on them a lot. We could. There, there is a lot of great games in the in yeah. In look, the, like every game list. on here, like is is a good game and like. I, I would argue like a great game, but I, I just feel like if you're going to do a list like this, you need to be, like pay more attention to like the history of the entire medium. Cause like street fighter two is the 27 and street fighter two changed the industry in ways that we're still feeling effects to this day. Well, I think if we were to make a list like this, we would be arguing like is chrono trigger worse than the sims right like like we would have to put all the games up against each other but yeah. they didn't do that they did it on a points system which yeah. i think is pretty interesting it's yeah. an interesting way to do it because then you don't have the uh you don't have those sort of fights yeah it's just like it is what it is the, yeah. the points say that the sims is better than chrono trigger mm -hmm. so we're putting it up there anyway also, uh, no Sonic the Hedgehog games on this list, so we can at all. I just, I just did Control Finds. I just Sonic, did it yeah. too. Nothing. That's crazy. I hate when they do that. So let's let's come up with our own top ten. Oh God! Now we're just gonna take the rest of the show. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, we have our own personal top we have tens, our own right? Yeah. I'm thinking. Back would in my Sonic... space days, I I wrote one. <laughs> would Sonic be in my top ten? It would be in mine. Which one? Sonic three. Yeah, Sonic, Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But we know that Mania is better. Right. <laughs> well, I think like my personal top 10 is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But if someone were to ask me what Sonic game they should play, I would tell them Mania. Right. Because it's better. Right. To currently play. Yeah. You're taking into account the cultural impact that Sonic 3 had. Yeah. You well, know? technically, it should be the cultural impact Sonic 2 had. Because that has a bigger impact. Yeah. But 3 was a better game. Yeah. <laughs> Now here we it's are. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Okay. All this other bullshit dumb news like the European <laughs> Union approved the Microsoft deal. <laughs> what was that guy who said like why do we keep reporting on this? I don't know, but here we are again. Tune out for 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about the Microsoft deal. Uh Microsoft 69 billion dollar deal to acquire Activision Blizzard has been approved by the EU regulators just weeks after the UK regulators said no. Uh the European Commission has concluded that the deal can pass thanks to commitments from Microsoft related to cloud gaming. The EU found that Microsoft would have no incentive to refuse to distribute Activision's games to Sony and that even if Microsoft did decide to withdraw Activision's games from PlayStation, this would not significantly harm competition in the console market. EU regulators, much like the UK, did find the acquisition could harm competition around the distribution of PC and cloud games, uh, sorry, PC and console games through cloud gaming services. The European Commission has identified remedies to allow for the deal to go ahead through 10-year licensing deals that Microsoft has offered to competitors. These include a free license to consumers in EU countries that would allow them to stream via any cloud gaming uh, streaming service of their choice all current and future Activision Blizzard PC and console games that they have a license for. Cloud providers will also be offered a free license to stream these games in EU markets. These licenses are automatic and mean that uh, consumers will have a right to stream Activision Blizzard games they've purchased or subscribed to on any cloud gaming streaming service of their choice and play them on any device using any operating system. It appears that the European Commission requested Microsoft offer this automatic license and that the Xbox maker will now apply this globally. Didn't we say that? I think we laid this out when we said when, we when, when the know. UK when the U when the UK denied it. Yeah, I think we were like, give them some 
some ground rules, you know, like yeah. you don't have to out, outright deny it. You can be like, hey, you can go through with the deal if you allow your games to be played on other platforms. So we knew that Microsoft was like making the effort to like offer these games to other platforms like Nintendo, like Steam, like all the yeah, other platforms. Yeah. Microsoft said they were going to do it. Yeah. But like the UK could have been like, prove it. Yeah. Now you have to do it. So what we didn't know, and the, the EU basically said prove it, and they did. Yeah. What we didn't know is that part of the deal was that Microsoft can offer these licenses for free. Yeah. So that literally just means we can start a streaming service tonight, <laughs> call up Microsoft and say, we want the license to this. Interesting. Yeah. So... Yeah, the EU's decision to approve this giant deal comes less than a month after the UK regulators blocked Microsoft's plans. The UK's a comp Competition and Markets Authority blocked the deal over cloud gaming market concerns, stating that the acquisition could lead to reduced innovation and less choice for UK gamers over the years to come. Microsoft is appealing the decision. Uh, Microsoft spent the past few months trying to address regulators' concerns around cloud gaming with the deals convincing EU regulators, but not the UK. The software giant signed cloud gaming deals with Boostroid, uh, Ubitus, and NVIDIA to allow Xbox PC games to run on these rival cloud services. A similar deal with Nintendo was announced in December. All of these 10-year deals also include access to Call of Duty and other Activision Blizzard games if the deal is approved by regulators. It's looking more and more like the Nintendo situation is cloud-based. Yeah, which I think... I get it, but I also I feel like... These are definitely games that could run on the Switch just like at a lower spec. Yeah. You know, because like Call of Duty is on is a PC game. It has scalable specs. So like just scale it down. A honestly, after playing Apex on the Switch, like I, yeah. I don't know if I would want Call of Duty on the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> I I think it would have to be they'd have to somehow make it better than how Apex works. And I think one of the easiest ways to do it is honestly through the cloud sure but like i keep thinking about doom 2016 mm -hmm. and how that game runs on the switch yeah i mean yeah it's a lower resolution and it's probably a lower frame rate too but like it runs it's I the think, whole game i think panic button worked on the apex port yeah and they did they did a bad job <laughs> um so i mean look it it's it passed in uh europe Mm -hmm. uh it still it has still hasn't passed in the united states yet those are the three big markets e the uk the eu and the united states um it would be interesting if it didn't if it went through everywhere but the uk how how microsoft would have to deal with that i think they're gonna appeal it and there will be some sort of rules like yeah to happen with the eu I, I think that they will uh, mm -hmm. uh end up in the same boat pretty yeah. much and america we still they're still in court, right? Uh, the Federal Trade Commission in the United States sued to block Microsoft and Activision's deal late last year, and the case is still at the document discovery stage. An evidentiary hearing is now scheduled for August 2nd, so we're still months away from knowing the outcome of the case. I think America will probably just follow everybody. Probably, yeah. yeah. We'll probably have the same sort of ground rules. Yeah. Although, I don't know. I mean, they don't... I mean, our laws again, don't understand this sort of technology. Right. So uh, it helps that these other countries are, are setting like a, like a, like a standard. Yeah. But I don't know what the motive of our courts is going to be. Yeah. It, it, it could be t to help the big corporations and it could be to, I don't know, set, I don't know what other political agenda the <laughs> fucking people would have to like block the, the, the Microsoft deal or right. put through the Microsoft deal. But that we looked at the fucking TikTok court case yeah. and we were like, Oh, it looks like all these well, fucking bullshit people are putting, uh, putting when, through their when own When it comes to opinions. like, you know, big companies like merging or like buying each other out, you know, a lot of it stems from, uh, Congress and the courts like still are running on what was called the Chicago school of finance um where basically it's okay if companies merge and acquire each other so long as prices don't get raised okay and basically what the what they've been doing over these past like 30 40 years since this has been popular is every time like these companies start to merge together they say are you going to raise prices and the companies go no and that's it yeah that's how Ticketmaster became the number one ticket. Yeah, they need to. The they need to 
put through they regulation. Need to, yeah, they need to enforce, you know, the standards that they're setting. If you're saying, are you going to raise prices? And they say no, and they go and raise prices. You need to do something about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You need. You to, don't just sit there until a bunch of Taylor Swift fans get mad. Yeah, you need to say, "Are you going to raise prices?" They say no. Be like, "Okay, you can't for ten years." Yeah. Like here, here's the, or else you're going to be broken up, yeah. or you owe us a fuck ton of money. Yeah. You you'll be fine. Something like that. Um. Uh, anyway. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Talk. Uh, wait, let's blast through these last few. Okay. Hogwarts Legacy got delayed on. The it Switch. got delayed on the Switch. Uh. It is now coming out November 14th. It was originally supposed to come out in April, and Whoa. they got pushed back to July 25th. At the time, all the last-gen ports got hit with a delay, but the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions have since been released. The original, the game originally launched for PS5, Series X, and PC back in February. That's crazy. I, I'm surprised it's coming out at all. Yeah, they must, like, really... I mean... It doesn't have to come out on Switch. The yeah. game is already like one of the best selling games of the year. They don't need it to come out on Switch. The fact that there's, they still think they can put it out on Switch says to me like they believe, they really do believe in the power of this brand that it could, they can just spread it everywhere. Which... So, so it's worth noting that it is verified on the Steam Deck, and I heard one, at least one person say that it runs pretty good. Okay. But I don't, I'm not, I don't believe them <laughs> because the game doesn't really run good on most pc like right. it, like it, it's got yeah. problems so i don't know how i believe them if it runs good on steam deck but it is verified on steam deck which right. means that there is some yeah leeway for it to run on the switch i just i i would have expected this to be canceled by now. yeah because i mean they just canceled midnight suns the marvel game on switch and i know like people are you know you're starting to get the sense that people are leaving the switch behind like developers are gonna leave the switch behind as their games get more and more technologically advanced and you know we're on a seven-year-old system by now but and even older because it's like a cell phone chip really yeah uh but like they're they're still it, the game must work and like work fairly well on the switch for them not to cancel it at this point but they they need a lot more time than they thought to like polish and refine before they can get it out the door yeah, and I would have thought by now they would think it's not worth it. Yeah. But I mean, the game sold so much. I mean, this this keep in mind, this is the same company that decided a half finished Batgirl movie should be canceled. <laughs> That's true. All right, next, uh, Amazon wants new Lord of the Rings MMO. Yes, uh, new world developer Amazon Games has partnered with Embracer Group's Middle Earth Enterprises to create a brand new MMO based on Lord of the Rings. The MMO, uh, which is completely separate from 2007's Lord of the Rings Online and from Amazon's previously canceled Lord of the Rings MMO, is currently in the early stages of development. Uh, Amazon Games Orange County, the team that behind New World, is leading development on the new MMO, which will come to PC and consoles. No release window has been given, though Amazon Games did say it would feature stories of The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings book trilogy. There's currently no Lord of the Rings MMO? There was 2007's Lord of the Rings Online. I don't know if that's still up and running. Oh, okay. I was going to say, this seems like the franchise seems ripe for an MMO. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, this is Amazon. Amazon's got that television show that they spent a billion dollars on that apparently only 33% of viewers actually finished. Oh my God. <laughs> so great money spent there. That sucks. Like, they're, they're going all in. It's so weird what's going on with Lord of the Rings because Amazon's going all in on it. Warner Brothers is going all in on it because they made the movies. They're like, we can still make movies on Lord of the Rings. Blah, blah, blah. So it, it's a weird time to be a Lord of the Rings fan. Let me just say that. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazon still trying to make the Amazon Game Studio happen. <laughs> and they, I guess they figure Lord of the Rings is Lord of the Rings did so well for our TV studio, it'll do well for our game studio too. All right. Last news is that Ubisoft is spending a fuck ton of money on Assassin's Creed. Wow. Yes. Uh, well, specifically, could have guessed that. following a challenging year of losses and few releases, Ubisoft is preparing to pump resources into Assassin's Creed uh, to secure its future. It will include restructuring that will increase the headcount on Assassin's Creed title development by 40% in the coming years, oh my God. following a rash of layoffs that reduced the company's global headcount uh, to below 20,000. So basically, uh, Ubisoft had a bad couple of years, and their idea to fix it is just put all their eggs in the Assassin's Creed basket. Yeah, uh, I I could have guessed that. I mean, yeah. I mean, it is weird that 
they it, it's strange that Ubisoft did so bad. Yeah. And uh I think the easiest thing in their brain is to is like Assassin's Creed is a cash cow, might as yeah. well just spend all the time on that. Kind of like what Activision does with Call of Duty. Yeah. But like people the people don't see the problem with this. Like yeah. you, they've created a situation where you know everything around them fails so but the only thing that you know keeps keeping the lights on is their one game yeah so and you're, that... you're sacrificing all of these other unique games so that this one game can just keep being farted out every year and that will also it's not gonna be good like this isn't yeah, no. a good strategy like they keep releasing games that are barely any different from each other mm-hmm. and assassin's creed has suffered from that for a long time so spending all of your resources on on that people are gonna get burned out on that too just like they did all of your other games so yeah. people got burned out on assassin's creed already they had to take yeah. like a year break yeah they didn't release one out. they didn't release one last year did they no and i know like there was a break between whatever the last assassin's creed was in origin and people liked origin and then they just made origin odyssey uh valhalla and then there was a break wait where am I? <laughs> Release history. Yeah. Do they really not have anything? Wait. The past couple of years? Or- Assassin's Creed Origins was the last couple of games, right? Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla right. was the last three. That's not on this list at all. None mm-hmm. of those are on this list. What are you looking at? Look at Wikipedia. List How of- does Wikipedia not have... Unless I'm having a stroke. I could just be having a stroke. I'm looking at now uh, release history. Yeah, Assassin's Assassin's Creed Syndicate 2015, Origins 2017, Odyssey 2018, Valhalla 2020, Mirage 2020 is what I didn't see. I didn't see anything past 2020. What the? I Roll up. Assassin's Creed Identity. Oh, uh, you're going too fast. Where are you? Well, no, I, I, release history. S- yeah. The following table lists are main and spinoff games. Scroll, the franchise. Scroll slowly. 2018 is the up, last up one. Up a little bit. You're going into the spinoff oh, section. Oh, I went to spinoffs. <laughs> it, it, it breaks it up. The main games and then the spinoffs. Yeah. That explains that. Oh. <sighs> So Mirage is the next one. Mirage is the next so one. So is Mirage the one they're spending all of his money on? Uh, that's the start of the one they're going to spend all of his money on. Okay. And then I guess, you know, whatever the next game is, they look out. So Mirage is this year. Yes. Coming out later this year. Okay. So that, that what they're spending a lot of money on is going to be the next one. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's not yeah. going to be good. But like, if they're shifting resources to play, add more resources to Assassin's Creed, that means all their other games... Games that I'm actually looking forward to, like the Prince of Persia remake, like their upcoming Splinter Cell no. reboot, they're gonna suffer. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna like those. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the Prince of Persia remake already looked like shit, mm-hmm. and like they just keep delaying it because like they know it looks like shit. <sighs> all right, it's all the news to the week. All right. <laughs> This is from Ultima Shadow X, and this is a video, and I'm going to play it, and you got to okay. bring your eyes open. <laughs> uh, no, I already know what it is just from the picture. One fine-looking vehicle. Why does not mine look like that? Ah, I don't find my much nice be so hot. <laughs> so... If uh, that didn't get uh, muted in the YouTube version, uh, that is, uh, it's a it's a Zelda meme. It's, a, it's from the new game. It's the it's a cool looking car. Then and Link is Homer Simpson. Yes, and he failed Ups, and made a upset really upset that his grill doesn't look like the picture. Yes, yes. Uh, ha ha. Yeah, yeah. You had to be there in the nineties yes. watching yes. watching uh, the Simpsons. All right, now we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes, starting with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. We'll also give a thank you to Cyborg Birdie and Marimba Pirate for the Prime subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alex Beard says, I'm a teacher and I have a student who just got a Switch Lite because the 3DS eShop closed. 
He said he opened his 3DS to download a Cooking Mama game and discovered the bad news. He is now happily reliving his childhood and playing Super Mario Galaxy on 3D All-Stars. There will be 15 million people like him. That's yeah, very interesting. I didn't I haven't thought about uh like there were people who had a Wii for way after the Wii's yeah. life and like played it and and that's why games kept coming out for it because yeah. it was so the install base was so huge. I haven't thought about people who just still actively played their 3DS and didn't have another console. Mm. I will say today I made the very terrible decision to uh look myself up on Reddit oh, because boy. um because you're vain because <laughs> i'm vain no because somebody said that uh hey reddit seems to really like your rog ally review so i was like oh i wonder what they're saying and i looked and they said some nice things yeah but then i saw uh i was on the 3ds piracy subreddit oh boy <laughs> and the title of the post was wolf den just fucking talked about fight club because i talked <laughs> about because i talked about the eight shop and all of the com- the comments were not happy. But the top comment mm-hmm. was, this was crazy for him to talk about as somebody who's worked with Nintendo before. I have, and that was yeah. the top comment, which means it had a lot of people agreeing with it. Yeah. I have never worked with Nintendo before. You, you should have, <laughs> like, just responded. Like, it was, the post was over a month ago, uh, so I didn't want to engage with it. But they thought I was wood. They were confusing right. me with wood, right. obviously. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ty Zilla says, I love watching delusional Xbox fanboys try to convince people Xbox hasn't always been the inferior console. It's like listening to a person trying to convince you that the earth is flat. They ignore the facts that don't support their theory. It's absolutely hilarious. How about say something? Yeah. How about this- say something? What facts? Yeah, what tell facts me a are fact. You talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm blatantly ignorant to the facts. Yeah. No. Like, the Xbox had one very bad generation, admittedly. And like Phil Spencer said, it was the worst generation to lose. Because they didn't have games. But they did a lot to re- to try to present their system to be a good alternative to Sony. Because, honestly, aside from the fact that it doesn't have a good uh, collection of exclusive games, it is. Uh, there's, a- there's a lot about xbox that i like more than playstation and it's all uh user experience and hardware and ui stuff i don't like a lot of what playstation has going on but playstation got the games and xbox doesn't Mm -hmm. and i think we that's all we ever talk about yeah sam dunham says kate bush had belongs in the Hall of fame since her debut album george michael had belonged since he broke away from wham the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame hasn't been rock for decades. It's more pop than rock. So you are correct. I was just being a grumpy old boomer about the whole situation, as I mostly am around the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've actually had like this conversation with friends of mine, like talking about like how certain people shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I've tried to explain to them. It's more about like rock and roll isn't like a genre of music. It's an idea. It's a theory. It's a lifestyle. You know, if you exemplify like the core tenets of like rock and roll the image not necessarily the music then yeah you would belong in the rock and roll hall of fame because there are people who deserve to be in the rock and roll hall of fame madonna run dmc solomon burke isaac hayes like they all deserve to be in there yes i was just being grumpy because iron maiden had the chance to get in and he lost to george fucking michael i mean come <laughs> on also i'm not like i'm not wrong kate bush would have never gotten in the rock and roll hall of fame if it wasn't for stranger things that's not the first time that's happened the ramones would have never gotten into the rock and roll hall of fame until Joey Ramone died. <laughs> That's a good point. Yes. So, uh, Giga Wii U 64 says, I can see myself buying a Switch OLED in the near future. I already have two Switches, on, and my better battery Switch needs a new shell. I'll probably get a transparent purple one. I feel like at a certain point, like people are still going to be buying switches, but it's it's going to be like enthusiasts buying switches. You know, yeah. like people like us who like want to get a second one. It's not going to be like the general public who like really helps get these numbers up to like the hundred million sales. You know? I had somebody ask me, should I buy the new OLED? Like I have a launch switch. Should I buy the new OLED because I want to play Tears of the Kingdom? And I was like, right. no. Yeah. Like it's not worth it to spend all that money. It's going to run fine on your yeah. on your launch switch. George McFarland, Bob, stop talking crap about Pikmin just because you had you, you're bad at it. Challenge, impossible. I'm sick of people saying 
that I'm bad at a Nintendo game <laughs> as if it's possible to be bad at a Nintendo game. Right. Yeah, they're all oh. fucking kids games. The only one you could be bad at is Smash Brothers. I feel like you can be like bad is a relative term. Mm-hmm. You know, you might not get like, you might not I get have the functioning game. game sense. Like I'm not right. like a, a toddler is picking up or or an old person is picking up a game for the first right. time. You know, like I know how to play a game. Right. I don't think you can be necessarily bad. Like this is one thing fucking pit- a lot of people were saying uh, that about my Zelda takes. Yeah. That oh, you're just bad at it. No, that, you can't be bad at a Zelda game. No, they're like, for fucking children. That's that's something I disagree with. When like yeah. oh, you just don't like the game because you're bad at it. Yeah. No, like you cannot like a game because you don't like the game. Yeah. You know that's one thing. You can you can be bad at a Nintendo game. Like some of some of them do get pretty challenging. Like some of the Mario platforming stuff is pretty challenging. Like, if if you're trying to go for like the completionist, but if you're just trying to beat even, the like, game, I think that they're all pretty fucking easy. To us, because we've been playing them for years, you give them to somebody who hasn't really played Mario as much as we have. Like if I sat my wife down and had her play like the first level of Odyssey, she would just like say, I can't do this. Yeah. Cause like sh- you know, she hasn't played a 3D Mario game ever. Yeah, but that's really. that's what I'm saying about having functional game sense. Right. Like, if you've played games before, I think you're going to have a fine time playing any Nintendo game. I mean, most of them. I feel yes, like there's, yeah. like, some of the more hardcore ones, like Metroid Prime, F-Zero. C- C- Cartland Do- Donahue says, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, I take it back. That game is actually hard. Yeah. That game. But, like, unfairly hard. <laughs> like, well, it, like, it... You learn through depths, and yeah. I think that that's not like the best way to do difficulty yeah. in a game. Um, some Mario Odyssey levels were tough. Yeah, yeah. the the post game stuff, like like the like the very end, like, right? Where you want the credits to roll the second time, yeah. you know? But yeah, that stuff got got hard. I think after playing the new Zelda, I'm realizing that Zelda is really good at making people feel smart. Yeah. But really, it's just the game's telling you, yeah. <laughs> like, or the game's not telling you, and yeah. and then you have to figure it out yourself, and then you feel smart because you did it, and you mm-hmm. feel like, oh, I'm good at this game. But really, it's like, okay, you just fucking googled that, like, yeah. and that's not being <laughs> smart. Yeah. Um. Anyway, now we're in the chat. Hi, yes. Hi, hey, everybody. Uh, Griffinix says, "Imagine being bad at Kirby." <laughs> Kirby is a little sad because yeah. it's, it's, it's such like a fucking baby game. Yeah. Uh, that last level of Velocity is insanely hard leading up to the Bowser fight. The... I forgot everything about Odyssey. Uh, the last level right before the first Bowser, like the like the wedding scene. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's hard. The, there's the very last one after that yeah uh i forgot what it's called but like i know what you're talking about it's like a trials or something yeah fact, that's that's actually hard uh edward bova has a whole big thing so bob what do you think about the official translation of nintendo's financial q a of the recently released figures did we talk uh, about recently, his figures is now available to view online in which the company's president shintaro furukawa discusses the time between Switch's announcement and its release, hinting that the same may not be applied to future consoles. Oh. He said, uh, so we announced our entry into the mobile business at that time. We needed a lot of people to know that Nintendo would be continuing to focus on the dedicated video game platform business as our core business. So I believe that the timing of Nintendo Switch announcement was a special case. We will provide information about new hardware and software at the appropriate time for each product and strive to reach a wide range of customers. We do not believe that reaching a certain number of annual playing users means that there is no need to release a next generation platform. I cannot say anything specific about a next generation platform at this time, but we are always working on various projects aimed at the future by asking ourselves what kind of fun proposal we can make which can possibly provide new and unique entertainment. Okay, that's fucking the most bureaucratic. Thing. Yeah, Nintendo is like notorious for like not answering your question, but yeah. also answering your question. Yeah, that does that seems like yeah. nothing. 
Uh, the Jordan. Thank you for the subscription. Uh, okay. I just pinned a comment. God damn it. I hate <laughs> doing that. Unpin this. Uh, Super Mar- Kevin Magdon says, Super Mario 3 gets hard at the w- final world, especially... Su- okay, Mario 3 is hard. Yes. Mario 3 is hard. Yes. I'll say post N64... Nintendo games aren't hard. <laughs> Before that, Nintendo yeah, games are pretty, pretty hard. I, I know Mario 3 is hard because I played it a bunch. Yeah. But also, uh, that time I challenged Jackson to beat it. Yeah. I think it was... I think I said you have... It was something like, I'll give you $50 if you beat it in an hour. And mm-hmm. every hour after that, I remove $10. <laughs> and he couldn't beat it in five hours. Right. Yeah. Because it's hard. The yeah, last it's world. Very hard. And yeah. it's deceiving because it feels like it's fine. And then yeah. you get to the last world and it's it's all of a sudden yeah. super hard. Uh, I saw one. The Mad Lad. Have y'all seen the FNAF movie trailer on Twitter? How would y'all rate it in terms of games being made into movies? I saw that it was posted while we were uh, while we were streaming. Uh, I saw the posters for it. The posters look fine. Um... And I saw a clip of the trailer and made it look like it was taking place like in the 80s, like it was filmed on a VHS camera. So oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a look at it. I'm yeah, really not I'll look interested. At, yeah. I mean, who cares? People still like that stuff. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm not interested in FNAF or, yeah. or uh, video game movies from a franchise I've never yeah at a certain point like uh m skelton says hey bob i've been watching a bunch of old wolf den videos and gotta say you've come a long way (laughs) thank you that's like that's like seems like a backwards yeah compliment yeah (laughs) kirby lore is way more intense and deep than fnaf lore i gotta say i think uh fnaf is only a big deal because of uh youtubers that yeah. created lore out of it like like that lore did not exist in the game uh, yeah other youtubers like dug really deep and made their own lore around it and then like the creator like kind of implemented it in the game yeah. and played off of it a little bit but he wasn't as good as the youtubers yeah were at doing i remember it. seeing like the first like couple of ones and i'm like they're really big like this it's literally just like you a picture of a room and sometimes a 3D model yells at you. That's the game. It's it's just the game was so popular that all these YouTubers were like, oh, we can make videos and leech off of this popularity. Yeah. And then they did by making a story out yeah. of it. And then uh, that also helped the game. Right. It was a little bit symbiotic. Definitely MatPat that can... Sh- yes, MatPat. I'm uh, talking yeah, about MatPat. Yeah, specifically. But like, you know, to be fair, a lot of other people. Yeah. But uh, mostly him. <laughs> Ava Vaporeon, do you guys think the Zelda OLED will be a, the last special edition Switch? There is a possibility, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What, there's nothing else coming out. Yeah, I mean... you. I mean, it would be really weird to get a Pikmin one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. I mean, unless they have a surprise game for the fall that we don't know about. They have to have something this fall. Yeah. It, 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 something will happen this fall. I mean, I don't know, because Nintendo is also the type of company to be like, no, nah, we're good. This was a good enough year. They, they got to have a game later this year. They got to have something slated there. I don't know. They are very weird company. <laughs> a Nintendo first party lineup for the rest of the year is Pikmin and DLC. Yeah, I know. There's yeah. got to be something we don't know about. All right. Uh, Holy Lettuce says, hey, Will, what is your favorite DC comic or comic in general? Uh, Booster Gold. <laughs> no. No. It's Batman. <laughs> it's always Batman. The answer is always Batman. <laughs> Uh, all right, we're done. Thanks for hanging Thank out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever you get your audio podcasts from. But no matter where you get your podcasts from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Uh, Jackson's streaming. Go watch him. Uh, He's playing Zelda, and he just started today. 
so you don't have to worry about spoilers really all right uh i will see you definitely thursday yeah, tomorrow I'm probably going to be working on a video. So I'll see you Thursday, uh, probably playing more Zelda. Um, goodbye. Bye!